My week three NFL power rankings coming in at number 32. I have the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts dropped more spots in my power ranking than they did points versus the Jaguars because the Jaguars shut them out. Losing to the Jaguars, actually being shut out by the Jaguars, and then the week before tying with the Texans is going to secure you the last spot in my power ranking. At number 31, I have the Atlanta Falcons. Let me say this. Yes, the Falcons are 0-2 and they're low in my power ranking, but the Falcons have been competitive in both their games this year, and they almost came back versus the Rams. So I feel like the Falcons are close to putting together a full game that will get them a dub. At number 30, I have the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers lost two close games to start this season, but their coaching is just not good. They play sloppy, turn the ball over a ton, and Baker just needs to be better. At number 29, I have the Chicago Bears. So the Bears are back down to earth after their loss versus the Packers. The Bears need to get help for Justin Fields. He was 7 of 11 in this game for 70 yards and an interception. That's a terrible stat line. Please get this man an offensive line and some people to throw the ball to. At number 28, I have the Houston Texans. So they were tied for a while with the Broncos in their game. They ended up losing, but they did have Russell Wilson looking not so good in this game. At number 27, I have the New York Jets. What an electric comeback last second win for the Jets. This team really needed a win like that. A very exciting, just crazy win like that for their team and just like their morale in the locker room, I guess. And Garrett Wilson, he showed he's going to be a star. At number 26, I have the Seattle Seahawks. So the Seahawks looked like the Seahawks I expected to see this season this week versus the 49ers. They lost 27 to 7. At number 25, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars. So after being disappointed with Trevor's performance last week, he bounced back in a big way this week. He was 25 of 30 for 235 yards and two touchdowns. This defense, they shut out the Colts let them put up no points at all. And oh yeah, the Jags have sole possession of first place in the AFC South. At number 24, I have the Tennessee Titans. Just yikes, big yikes, because the Bills just absolutely embarrassed this team. Both quarterbacks were done in the fourth quarter. Tannehill was pulled because he was playing horribly. Josh Allen was done because... The work there was done. They won that game already by the fourth quarter. This Titans defense had no chance versus Bills offense. Literally, if they kept Josh Allen in, this Bills offense could have easily dropped 50. At number 23, I have the Washington Commanders. The Lions beat them pretty easily, and the defense gave up 36 points to this Lions offense. At number 22, I have the Cleveland Browns. So they had a last second loss versus the Jets. And let me say this, I'm not that confident in this Browns team this year. Even when Watson gets back, I don't think they're making the playoffs. At number 21, I have the Detroit Lions. Big win for the Lions versus the Commanders. Jared Goff, four touchdowns? Okay. St. Brown, Two touchdowns and over 100 receiving yards. Okay, I see you, Lions and Dan Campbell. I see you guys. At number 20, I have the Las Vegas Raiders. I know I sound like a broken record when I say this repeatedly, but I did not like the McDaniels hire. And look, they blew a 20-0 lead at halftime and lost this game versus the Cardinals. This was a game they really should have won and really needed to win because now they're 0-2 in the toughest division in the league. At number 19, I have the Cincinnati Bengals. Like, honestly, what is up with the Bengals? They spent a ton of money to upgrade this offensive line. It seemed like this offensive line was going to be so much better this year, and it actually looks worse than last year. Joe Burrow is on pace for like over 100 sacks or something like that, which he's not going to get sacked 100 times because, you know, it's only week two. But actually, like, I don't know with the way this offensive line was looking like maybe he'll get close, he'll get sacked close to 100 times. I don't know. But honestly, I feel like the Bengals are going to bounce back. But when? Like, when are they going to bounce back? Because they're too good on paper to be this bad. Starting at 0-2 really puts them behind the ball here and puts them in a bad spot for the playoffs. But I feel like they have to bounce back, right? At number 18, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I thought this defense was going to be really, really good this year. And yes, I know TJ Watt was out, but I felt like they were going to really be able to slow down this Patriots offense that was not good at all week one. They gave up 17 points, which isn't a ton, right? But you have to carry this team if you're the defense because the offense is so bad. And yeah, giving up 17 points resulted in a loss. At number 17, I have the New England Patriots. So I don't know how they moved up seven points in the power ranking. It's not like that win was overly impressive, but hey, a win is a win and they move up in the power ranking. And oh yeah, their offense did look better than week one. At number 16, I have the New York Giants. They didn't play great or even good during their win versus the Panthers, but they won that game because of really, really good coaching. At number 15, I have the Arizona Cardinals. So huge comeback win for them in overtime. Kyler Murray just put this team on his back with this comeback. I mean, he was making some crazy plays, extending plays for a crazy, crazy long time. And Simmons had the huge force fumble to lead to the game winning touchdown in overtime. At number 14, I have the Dallas Cowboys. See, I'm happy I didn't move the Cowboys down a ton last week. I moved them down, but I said, let me not drop them super far because of, you know, what their outlook is for this season. And let me see if they actually lose these games. And look, 
They surprised me in one week two versus the Bengals. Cooper Rush, he's pretty good, you know, pretty good. Micah Parsons, he's really good. Like, Micah has been insane this season. If I'm an opposing quarterback, I'm afraid of Micah Parsons because he's been a disturbance for opposing quarterbacks. At number 13, I have the New Orleans Saints. So I really don't know how this team moved up in the power ranking after a loss, but I guess I thought other teams lost worse or something. I don't really know, but I will say this. If I'm a Saints fan, Jameis's back has to concern me a little bit. He has a fractured back. He's playing through it, but we could tell he's kind of uncomfortable out there. He threw three interceptions in this game. At number 12, I have the Minnesota Vikings. What an unreal experience it was watching Kirk Cousins last night. Like, it just seemed unreal that this guy could just continually throw interception after interception after the defense or special teams made a crazy play to set up this offense in good field position, try to bail them out, and he would just go back throw another interception. It was almost too predictable watching his, him play. It was like, wow, this seems fake. It's just automatic with the interception. At number 11, I have the San Francisco 49ers. Nice one for them, Sunday versus Seahawks, but a huge loss losing Trey Lance for the season. At number 10, I have the Denver Broncos. They got the win versus the Texans, although it was really, really ugly. But listen, a win is a win, and hopefully this gives this team some momentum and confidence moving forward. At number nine, I have the Green Bay Packers. So they continued their winning ways versus the Bears and got a pretty easy win versus Chicago. I mean, this game was basically over before halftime. At number eight, I have the Los Angeles Rams. So I don't like moving teams down after a win, but I move the Rams down one spot because I just don't feel like they're in that top tier of elite teams. They just, I don't know, they don't look super great so far this year. At number seven, I have the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar, he balled out in this game, but the defense collapsed late in this one and allowed the Dolphins to make a crazy comeback. At number six, I have the Miami Dolphins. So what a crazy, crazy comeback win for this Dolphins team. I personally think the biggest win within this win was the way Tua played. Six touchdowns, over 400 passing yards, four touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Like that's huge for him, I think, and his confidence. I think that's got to give him a ton of confidence and really shush the, the critics and the doubters. At number five, I have the Los Angeles Chargers. Tough loss for them versus Kansas City. It was a close game, but the big concern is obviously Justin Herbert, and hopefully he's ready to go next week. At number four, I have the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles look really, really, really legit right now. I mean, it's crazy how much better Jalen Hurts looks this year. I mean, how do you stop this guy with the run pass option? You can't because he's throwing the ball great. He's running the ball great. Like you can't stop this guy. And he's also running through defenders. And number three, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So they finally did it. They finally beat the Saints. It was an ugly game, but the defense carried them to a dub. And number two, I have the Kansas City Chiefs. So this was another game where the defense carried. And I was honestly surprised. This defense really impressed me. Mahomes didn't play his best game, but like I said, the defense was really impressed kind of surprising and help them secure that win. And at number one, I obviously have the Buffalo Bills. No explanation needed here. I will just say, I don't remember the last time I saw a team this dominant. Like they've dominated their first two games in an unreal way. So that is it for this video. Appreciate you guys watching till the end. Peace.